Hello, and welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend a few minutes with the staff at Cook Library. I'm Nate Goss, and I'm here today with Becky, our AV librarian. And today we want to try out a new segment that we're going to call Bonus Features, uh, where we're going to both recommend a movie that we think is well worth seeing, but that we're thinking you might have missed. Uh, So welcome, Becky. Thanks. Welcome back, I should say. And um, so do you want to jump in and go first? I think you've got a movie that you want to share with the listeners. I do. This one is um, a real gem, I think. It's called Hunt for the Wilder People. Uh, Before you go on, I should mention these are both movies from this year. Came out this year in 2016. Yep, new features that are kind of under the radar. Yes. Um, So Hunt for the Wilder People. Instead of Wilder Beasts, we have Wilder People. Um, The film is from New Zealand. And it's been making a splash at film festivals around the world as an audience favorite. And for good reason, as I said, I think it's a real gem. Um, The movie stars Sam Neill, whom I think, you know, film watchers will probably recognize from a lot of BBC television series over the years. And then also a young actor by the name of Julian Dennison, who's just great. Um, The film takes place in New Zealand, and the story revolves around kind of a chubby 13-year-old foster kid from the city who has kind of been bounced around between foster families over the years because he kind of just keeps getting into mischief. Not anything really serious, no serious trouble, but just kind of always up to, you know, something that good. Um, And as sort of a last-ditch effort, the child welfare officials um, place him with an older couple that live really out in the middle of nowhere, right on the edge of the New Zealand bush country. And their names are Bella and Heck. And Bella is thrilled to have Ricky stay with them, and heck, not so much. So um, circumstances arise, which I won't go into because it would be a spoiler, that send Ricky and heck on the run from child welfare officials. And for all, you know, for all appearances, it looks like Ricky's been kidnapped by heck, and so the pair quickly become the focus of an all-out nationwide manhunt. Um, so the film follows their crazy adventures, living on the run for months in the wilderness as the most unlikely set of fugitives you'd ever meet, um, and really a pair who don't like each other all that much. So the question becomes, how long can they survive out there, and what will happen if and when they get caught? So I, I love the movie. It's charming, funny, heartwarming, gorgeous scenery, st- you know, stuff you rarely see on screen, um, quirky combination of a buddy movie, coming-of-age film, Adventure movie kind of all rolled into one. Great cast of supporting characters that add a lot to the comic feel of the movie. And um, it has a great message, too. I think it's kind of like, you know, what what family's all about. Rated PG. There's just a little bit of violence and some language in it, but really pretty tame. And um, definitely something that you could watch with your family, no doubt. Interesting. Yeah, it sounds like a great film. So Feel good. Yeah, and so this, this came out this year. Do you, I mean... Did it ever even hit theaters this year? I really don't feel like I heard anything yeah, about it. Yeah, I'm not it. sure how long it played in the U.S., but it as you know, was at Sundance. It screened at Sundance and some other, um, like Seattle and places like that. Okay. Um, but it has been out making money, you know, kind of around the world. I think it's going to be a slow buzz type of movie. But we already have it here we at do the library. Have it. Yep, and put it on hold. It's really, it's worth the watch. Really I'm, fun. I'm, I'm going to do that myself. All right, so that's uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. And um, so I'm going to move into this is my my uh, bonus feature. My pick is going to be going to be similarly kind of another coming of age story Mm -hmm. uh, called Sing Street, written and directed by an Irish director, John Carney. Uh, Some may remember him as uh, director of a movie called Once that came out a few years ago. A movie that was also set in Ireland and uh, focused a lot on music. Sing Street uh, is very much the same, but also very, very different. Uh, It's set in Dublin, but in early 80s Dublin, back when the music video was everything, you know. And so, so much of the uh, movie centers around a character named Connor, played by kind of, I think, a newcomer. Uh, His name's Ferdia Walsh Pilo, um, who plays a high school kid who's in a family that the parents are kind of on the verge of divorce. It's a little bit of a rocky home situation. He also gets thrown into a brand new school that's very strict. Um, And so there's a little bit of like, you know, trying to fit into this new school environment. Plus there's some bullying situations going on. And he also happens to run into a girl that he just sort of becomes infatuated with. And he tells her that he's in a band uh, even though he's not at the time. And so it kind of the most of the movie centers around him trying to build this band up with his sort of, you know, misfit friends. 
And so they do that. And it's all sort of like if you love like Duran Duran or The Smiths or The Cure or even some of that 80s Bowie stuff, that's ser- that's the influence that's being infused throughout the entire movie. And the, the music's um, in the movie. And the music is in the movie. There's music from those groups in there. But then there's also these original tunes that this, this high school band creates, and they're really good and really catchy. Um, and then they make their sort of quirky music videos as well with like amateur gear and so it's got a lot of comedy in that, and there's a little bit of that nostalgia in there from the 80s. And uh, it's just a really great movie for a lot of reasons, uh, partly because of that sort of high school. It's got that same sort of John Hughes feel. Mm-hmm. I think, though, one of my favorite parts of the movie, though, is that this, there's this relationship between Connor and his older brother, Brendan, played by an actor named Jack Rayner. And Connor's older brother is pretty much this, like, stoner burnout of a brother. But he kind of also serves as this reckless but actually very wise guide to Connor. And uh, not just a guide as far as, like, I mean, he's the one who turns him on to all sorts of different types of music and things like that. But also just a guide for how to kind of navigate through life. Almost a stand-in uh, parent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because the parents really aren't there. They're kind of self-involved. And so Brendan kind of takes that on. Um, And there's just so much love and respect for one another in the brother relationship that's just really touching to watch. So it's just got a lot of different stuff going for it. It's funny. It's an earnest kind of crowd-pleasing movie with really great music. And in fact, I feel like after I watched it, actually, it seriously restored my faith in the power of great music and the way that it kind of breaks down walls and it can actually bring us together. I would say Sing Street is a movie for uh, fans of everything from like School of Rock to John Hughes movies, as I said, all the way to like the comedy has a little bit of that sort of Wes Anderson Rushmore feel to it. Um, And then even like something like Moulin Rouge, just with the sort of fantasy elements of like when they bring the music videos in and they kind of weave in and out of the real Dublin, which is more gritty into this his Connor's kind of like imagination once in a while of uh, of of what he is sort of perceiving his band to be. (laughs) Um, Especially since it takes place during the '80s, first love. Yeah, it's got that crush. It's, It's got everything from you know that whole fitting into the new school. And then, of course, moving through that first romance. (laughs) So uh, I highly recommend it. And also I recommend not only the movie, but the soundtrack we have available. It's on it's on CD and it's also um, on our streaming platform, Hoopla, um, that you can um, check out right away uh, if even if the CD is checked out. So that's my uh, that's my feature. Sing Street. I loved it, too. Um, I also you mentioned the relationship between the brothers the first frame at the end of the movie, after the end of the movie, it says, for brothers everywhere. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. And that was just, like, captured it perfectly, I thought. Yeah. It was just a throw-in that I'm sure they added. Yeah, it got a little, got a little dusty in yeah. the room I was watching it, and I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. That yeah. was fun. And those are our bonus features. Yeah, and both available. Give them a chance. That's going to wrap it up for bonus features. Um, Thanks for listening. As we mentioned, if you want to uh, put a hold on or check out uh, any of these movies, make sure you hit up our website, www.cooklib.org, where you can search our catalog and see all the different formats we have available. Remember to check out our blog, Shelf Life, which is actually where this podcast is hosted from. But we also have all sorts of write-ups. And Becky actually uh, writes once in a while some great uh, movie posts and different lists of movies that that you should check out that are very relevant to things that are happening. That blog's address is shelflife.cooklib.org. Get in touch with us and leave some feedback. You can send us an email anytime. Webmaster at cooklib.org is that email address. If you enjoy this podcast, just keep spreading the word, and we would always appreciate a kind rating on iTunes. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. <laughs>